Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I want to do some war building, because it seems that magic schools are getting very popular. You have Strixhaven in Magic the Gathering, you have Schoolmans in Hearthstone, Jujutsu Kaisen is a new anime that is very good and very popular, HBO is going to make a TV show set in the world of Harry Potter, and there are many other examples. It seems that many companies did some market research and they concluded for some reason that magic schools would be popular in 2020 and 2021. And that's fine. I mean, I've seen some people complaining when companies do this, that they do some market research and then many companies are making at the same time movies about superheroes or pirates or science fiction or whatever. But I think, in principle, it's fine. Because, see it this way, for example, Shakespeare was commissioned to, to write many plays. And Leonardo da Vinci was commissioned to write many paintings. And so, in this case, you have companies that have hired many artists, many writers, and they are basically being commissioned, this time, to write stories about magic schools. And the fact that it is a commission doesn't make it any less a work of art, and it all depends on the talent and the dedication of these artists to make it something really good. But anyway, what matters here is that seeing all these different takes on the magic school trope inspired me, and I started imagining a fantasy world in which I have a job and someone commissions me to make the world building for a setting with a magic school. And I started thinking, how would I do it? How would I do my own take in this trope and make it fresh and original? And I actually have kind of a method to coming up with new versions of popular tropes. The first step is to think of many examples of this trope. We have Harry Potter, Percy Jackson, a wizard of Earthsea, Jujutsu Kaisen. But then we also have My Hero Academia and X-Men. And sure, I know, these are not magic schools, these are superhero schools, but are they really so different? When you think about it, the appeal of going to a magic school or a school for superheroes are very similar, and so I think they are just another variation of this same trope. For the second step, we have two options. We can either look at things that these tropes do similarly and try to do something different, or we can try to combine two of these tropes. For example, what if we could combine, somehow, the magic school with a superhero school? How would that even look like? I don't know, but it certainly sounds, sounds really interesting, so I'm gonna leave that up to you. Please share with us in the comments how would you combine those two ideas and if I get enough of those comments, I'm gonna make a video showcasing them and discussing those ideas with you. For the meantime, I decided to go with the first option and try to do something different. And I started noticing that in all of these examples, magic schools are always good. Don't get me wrong, not everyone that works in the magic school is good, and not everything that happens there is good, but at the end of the day, all these magic schools are forces of good in the world. And so I thought, what if they weren't? What if we had a magic school that was evil? The third step is to look for real-world inspiration. And in this case, I decided to go with the Hashassins. You have probably heard about the Hashassins because of the Assassin's Creed video games, but they were a real-life organization of professional assassins. And according to Marco Polo, the recruitment techniques were the stuff of nightmares. Just a warning, I'm about to talk about a lot of very disturbing stuff like kidnappings, suicide, slavery. So if you want to skip to the world building, please just go to the time shown on screen right now. They would kidnap teenage boys and drug them. Then these boys would wake up in a beautiful fruit garden with literal rivers of milk and wine flowing through them, along with many beautiful naked women. They would be very confused, but someone would come to tell them that they had died in their sleep, and because they were very faithful and devout Muslims, they were now in heaven. 
And Marco Polo says that they would enjoy this fake heaven for several days until they were drunk again, and then they would wake up somewhere in the real world. At which point, someone would explain them that God had brought them back to Earth because they were the only ones that could kill a very bad person. And all they had to do was to kill this one person and then kill themselves, and they, they would be back in heaven. And apparently, it worked, and you have these teenagers that would commit these murders and then kill themselves before they could be interrogated or questioned. Now, of course, we have to take everything Marco Polo says with a grain of salt, because if all the new recruits kill themselves, then how would there be people in the organization? But there probably was some degree of truth of what, to what Marco Polo was saying. Probably the Hashassins were kidnapping many boys and maybe girls, and then either drugging them and training them and using a lot of manipulation techniques to turn them into assassins, or in the case of the girls, sex slaves. And yeah, that sounds horrible. And then the worst thing is that these boys, the ones that did not kill themselves, would grow up and become very important members in the organization and then continue doing the same thing. They would kidnap other boys and put them th or, or girls and put them through the same treatment they had suffered or I guess enjoyed. It's, it's all very disturbing. And there are many stories of the legendary discipline that the Hashassins have. Like for example, they say that if they were ordered to jump from a window, they would immediately do it and die, no questions asked. Again, these are legends, but there's always some truth behind these kinds of stories. And that's what I'm gonna be using for inspiration. And finally, the last step is to get world building. So here it is. This is a world in which sometimes when you are distracted, looking at the distance, meditating, just resting, some people, sometimes, for no apparent reason, will see it. They will have a vision of a being watching them. And it's weird because that thing doesn't have eyes. It doesn't really have a face. And yet they have no doubt that this being is watching them specifically. And its sight burns. It burns in your soul and it marks you. And you might never see it again in your life, but you will, ever, you will forever carry that mark. And then when you die and when you are reborn, you will be able to use magic in your next life. The University of Wisdom will look for all of these people with magical abilities, always younger than 10 years old, and kidnap them, take them away from their lives and their families, and take them to their campus. And if they find people with magical abilities that are older than 10 years old, they will be killed. Better luck, better luck ne next life. For all the children that do make it to the campus, they will suffer the worst years of their lives. They will have a horrendous tra training and they will be tortured and until they accept that this is their life, that whatever else they had before, it's done. And then they will start adapting and maybe even will start making friends. At this point, the teachers will choose one of the children, someone that is very charismatic, very talented, someone that a lot of people like, and they will make the other children torture that person in ways they will never recover from. So that they know that the School of Wisdom doesn't care about anyone, no matter how talented or liked they are that they only need obedience from, from them. During this training, these children will learn how to use the five different magical abilities. The first one is the door to the void, because all the people who have been seen by the Watcher can become a sort of portal to another place, a place that is infinitely empty, a place where light goes to die, a place that devours heat and leaves nothing behind. When they become a portal to this place, they can absorb energy from the real world and send it there. 
they can freeze water, they can freeze the air itself. And with practice, they can even send there other forms of energy like light, electricity, or even kinetic energy. But of course, they have to be very careful because all the while, while you are this portal, your own energy from your body is being absorbed by that infinite void and you start becoming more and more cold to the point that some magic users have died frozen because they were not able to, to close this door on time. And in fact, their dead bodies remained cold, encased in ice for several days after their deaths. The second ability is to open the door of brightness because all the people who have been seen by the Watcher can become a portal to another place a place full of rage, an endless storm of fire with a mindless will to consume everything. During the time that magic users are these kinds of portals, they can bring energy from that place to the real world. They can shoot fire, they can melt rocks, and with practice, they can even bring other forms of energy like light, electricity, and yes, even kinetic energy. But again, they have to be very careful because all the while this portal is open, their bodies are absorbing more and more of this energy and they start sweating and becoming more hot. And of course, there are many stories of many magic users that were not able to close this door on time and their bodies just instantaneously sparked into flames and they were consumed before anyone could react or do anything to help them. The third ability is transmutation, because all the people who have seen the Watcher can see objects and they just instinctively know that this is just some arrangement of matter. And if they practice enough, they can turn it into another arrangement of matter. So for example, they can turn glass into sand, they can turn diamonds into coal. But of course, they cannot turn, for example, sand into an apple because it is not made of the same kinds of matter. It doesn't have the same kinds of elements. With enough practice, they can even learn to transmute their own bodies and turn themselves into giant birds or giant snakes or many kinds of monsters. And this way, they can fly long distances or they can go to the depths of the ocean or infiltrate in many places. But of course, like they cannot turn themselves into tiny birds or huge monsters. It has to be always something that has your same amount of matter. And of course, you have to be careful to not mess too much with your brain because there are many stories of magic users that turn themselves into monsters and monsters do not know how to do magic and they stay like that forever. The fourth ability is the Kwisatz Haverach, the shortening of the way. Because all the people who have seen this being can simply not be here and then be somewhere else. What we call teleportation. But it's not exactly teleportation because they pass through somewhere. They pass through a place. And not just that, they can send other stuff to that place. You can take any object and send it there, and it disappears. But there's no way to ever get it back. Whatever you put there stays there. And of course, there are many stories of wizards that try to teleport and then just never came back. In fact, many wizards eventually go crazy. They go mad with devotion for the being that saw them, that born their souls. And they voluntarily go to that place never to go back. And finally, the fifth ability and the hardest one to control is that sometimes the Watcher will whisper you things. It will show you things. This is how some magic users are able to find children with magical abilities. They just sense it somehow. They can also get visions of the future, of what might be, or they might get visions of the past either recent or very, very ancient. 
In fact, it is not unheard of that some magic users, when they enter ruins or very old buildings, they will have visions of what happened there centuries or even thousands of years ago. Of course, these whispers and visions can be very difficult to understand, and the magic users that get them more frequently are said to be very weird and cryptic, even for the standards of other magic users. And it is said that these magic users are the ones more likely to use the shortening of the way to go with the Watcher. The people, men and women, that end up mastering these abilities and survive their training go on to serve the University of Wisdom, and they are hired as assassins, mercenaries, or even bodyguards. And sometimes they may even be sent in secret missions to further the interests of the University of Wisdom. Of course, the University of Wisdom has a lot of power and a lot of money, and so all of its members who are loyal and obey end up living a life of luxury. They get drugs, they get beautiful houses, they get many slaves, they get everything they can ask for, as long as they obey and continue being useful to the institution. Of course, commanding thousands of very powerful magic users, as long as all the money and all of the other resources they have, makes the University of Wisdom a very, very powerful institution all across the world, to the point that they rival nations, and some people even call them a status in statu, or a nation within a nation. Of course, this means that the entire world is full of people who hate the University of Wisdom for kidnapping their children and all of the horrible things they are willing to do for money. But sadly, they are so powerful that it seems that this is an institution that will remain in the world for a long, long time to come. I mean, it would take several exceptional people to team up and to have the courage to challenge this institution in order to bring it down. But that's never gonna happen, is it? Did you like it? I think that this story has a lot of potential. I like the idea of the magic school being an evil institution and the story being how people are going to destroy it. But of course, I think this is not the kinds of stories that these companies we mentioned earlier are looking for. They want to sell fantasies, they want people to say, oh, that's so cool, I want to be a jujutsu sorcerer, or a wizard, or a ninja, or a demigod, or whatever. And, and that's fine, but I think this has a different kind of appeal. Uh, not, it's not a so cool I want to be there, but it's just, it's so horrible, I find very cool the idea of destroying it. <laughs> I tend not to worry too much about the plot when I'm doing these world building exercises, because I think that the world building should stand on its own, despite any plot it might or might not have. But I think that the plot I'm envisioning for this kind of world would be that uh, someone was taken by the University of Wisdom and was submitted to all of their training and torture, and maybe even become a very important member of, in this institution, and then something happens and this person, maybe, maybe a woman, maybe a man, I, I'm, I'm not sure, uh, but this person decides to destroy this institution, to get rid of this cycle of suffering, because it is just kidnapped people torturing other kidnapped people so that they go on and do the same things. And of course, this person would not be able to do it alone, and they would need help, perhaps from other magic users that betray the University of Wisdom, and maybe other people outside, like maybe people that don't have magic powers, or people that have magic but were not trained by the University of Wisdom, and maybe these people can show them another side of magic, and I don't know, it, it has a lot of potential. Also, I should mention that the University of Wisdom, that name, uh, is a reference to the House of Wisdom, which was a university held in Baghdad. It was a very cool place where people from all over the world got together and to talk about science. So this is like an evil version of that real world university. This is another real world inspiration I managed to sneak into my world building. 
Anyway, tell me in the comments what you thought about this world building exercise. Uh, tell me if you would take the idea of the evil school of wizards in a different direction. And tell me, what would be your take on the trope of the magic school? I'm willing to read them. And remember, if I get enough comments with very cool world building ideas, I'm gonna make a video showcasing them. Uh, well, thanks a lot. Oh, by the way, uh, I make videos of about a ton of different stuff. So tell you what, go to my channel, check the playlists. And if you find anything there you like, then please subscribe and give me a like. Thanks.